Hello my dear friends and family, today I want to show you some of the more unusual weaponry used on the battlefield in Ukraine. We call them Franken weapons. These are systems that mix together NATO and Soviet technology or even turn everyday civilian gadgets into combat tools. It's not always pretty, but in war you use what you have. You know, recently I mentioned that Ukraine only had 360 javelins as of 2022, while Russia had over 14,000 armored vehicles. And one of the viewers in the comments replied that it's better than zero. Unfortunately, better than zero truly became our motto, because Ukraine was never supplied with enough weapons to win the war, let's be honest. That is why Ukrainians have become very creative in making Franken weapons, combining the things that were never designed to fit together. Let's take a closer look at some of the most legendary examples. First is, of course, the legendary Franken Sam, which is not only an actual weapon or weapons, but a concept. You see, Ukraine had a lot of old Soviet air defense launchers like uh, Buk or S 300s, and those systems were designed to fire Soviet missiles. Supply of those missiles is running low, unfortunately, and it's not easy to get the new ones. So engineers found a way to adapt those old launchers to fire NATO standard missiles like the American uh, AIM-7 or even the AIM-9. It sounds absolutely crazy, like trying to stop the parts from Jeep into a Volkswagen, but it actually works, and it's really important because uh, it means that Ukraine can keep using the old Soviet-made launchers that would otherwise be useless, and fire missiles that NATO countries can still supply in large numbers. One version of Franken Sam mounts the Sea Sparrow missiles on Buk M1 vehicles. Another one called the Grave Hawk, designed in the United Kingdom, launches Soviet R-73 air-to-air missiles from a ground platform. In fact, there are even experiments putting AIM-9 sidewinders or Patriot sensors onto older Soviet-made systems. It's really interesting to observe such experiments, actually, that try to combine something that was never meant to be compatible. Something similar is happening in the air. Ukraine's air force primarily consists of Soviet aircraft like MiG-29, Su-24 and Su-27. These planes were built to fire Soviet weapons, of course, but again, those are really hard to get these days. So Ukrainians have been modifying the jets to fire American-made missiles like AGM-88 Harm anti-radiation missile. And it wasn't an easy integration, I must say, because uh, these airplanes were built in Soviet times and they don't have the right software or wiring for NATO weapons. So Ukrainian pilots and engineers had to retrofit these airplanes to accept Western weapons, even using iPads or tablets in the cockpit to control them. Another integration is GDAM gliding bombs. Photos show Ukrainian aircraft carrying those bombs that were basically turned into GPS-guided standoff weapons. And they've got MALD decoy missiles, for example, SU-27s, were seen launching ADM-160 MALD to spoof Russian raiders with following precision strikes. And of course, we should also mention the Storm Shadow missiles wired to the Soviet era Su-24 attack aircraft. The Ukrainian and NATO engineers actually managed to make them work really well to be effective in combat. And now let's move from expansive aviation technologies to something on the completely opposite end of the spectrum – cheap commercial drones. Before the war, people in Ukraine were buying drones like the DJI Mavic or Otel, primarily for filming weddings or making travel videos. During the Russia's full-scale invasion, Ukraine invented a completely new kind of warfare turning commercial drones into a tiny unmanned bombers. Basically, Ukrainian soldiers began attaching small droppable charges or hand grenades to those drones and dropping them on Russian positions. It's a simple but very effective solution, because for a few hundred dollars you can create an aerial system that can destroy a vehicle 
worth millions of dollars or eliminate a whole group of Russian terrorists. Of course, the Russian terrorists don't cost anything according to the Russian military doctrine, but make a good fertilizer for Ukrainian tomatoes. The way it works is the engineers simply rig the drop release mechanism like a basic server that lets the drone hover over a target and drop the payload. Experienced pilots can drop a charge into an open hatch of a tank or a BMP and later showcase the video of a confirmed hit to their friends. But the next step was even more creative, the FPV drones. Again, it was a Ukrainian invention that completely changed the course of the whole war. The FPVs are basically the racing drones that hobbyists normally use for fun, flying with goggles that give them a first-person view. Ukrainians began strapping RPG warheads to those drones that turned out to be capable to carrying such weight, which is not dramatically heavy, of course, but at the same time the RPG-7 warhead does its job really well, burning through some of the thickest Russian armor. Basically, the pilot flies the drone straight into a target like a tank or a truck or a bunker, turning the little FPV drone into a flying guided missile, but built from cheap parts that you can basically buy online. The armed forces of Ukraine officially introduced entire units that specialize in FPV drone attacks, which has completely changed the battlefield. Reports say that these little drones have knocked out a majority of Russian tanks and armored vehicle stockpile. And basically that's what we call a frontline ingenuity in action, because we still have an impressive stockpile of uh, PG-7 rockets, enough to wipe out the entire Russian stockpile of tanks and BMPs. And finally, let's talk about vehicles. Ukraine has a huge mix of equipment, like Soviet-era tanks, plus modern gear from NATO. To make them more effective, soldiers and volunteers started adding Western electronics to the Soviet machines like T-64 or BMP. For example, they started installing NATO radios like Harris radio stations or mounting thermal cameras and night vision sites to improve targeting at night. The modern equipment on the older Ukrainian tanks like T-64 and T-72 is not always plug and play, of course, but it gives old vehicles new eyes, ears and brains. A Soviet-designed tank from the 80s now hunts modern Russian vehicles at night using the Western thermal optics and chats via encrypted channels that correspond to the NATO standards. That's what I call the mix of cultures you can only experience in our part of the world. So these are just a few examples of what we call Franken weapons, basically creative solutions that make something absolutely incompatible. And the most important thing is that these solutions show that even in such an atrocious war like in today's Ukraine, ingenuity can make a big difference. Because unfortunately, Ukraine doesn't always have the luxury of waiting for the perfect weapon system. And sometimes it's about fighting with what's available and adapting it to survive and win. My dear friends, please let me know your thoughts in the comments and also don't forget to subscribe. My name is Operator Starsky. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to UATV English and stay updated on the most important events, top news from Ukraine and all over the world, in-depth analysis, exclusive reports and interviews all on hand in our channel. Join our community of viewers and stay tuned.